Hello and welcome to the vlog. Having now done the leak and frog hall arms of the Calden Canal, that is this canal done. So my plan for the next few days is to gently amble back towards Stoke-on-Trent and when I'm there I will head briefly north, once again through the Harecastle Tunnel and then turn off onto the Macclesfield Canal. The return trip up the Leak Branch and back to the start of the Calden Canal at Etruria is much the same as the trip down, so I'll largely gloss over most of it as it's been shown in prior videos, but there are one or two bits to point out. I began by going back through the narrow Leak Tunnel. And on this corner, I'm approaching a most unusual boat, a hybrid of a caravan, that's a travel trailer to my American friends, and a boat. It's called a caracruiser, and it can be towed behind a car on the roads, but floats when launched onto the canal. Back at the sharp turn after the leak arm goes over the frog hall arm, and this time there was a boat coming the other way just as I got through this bridge. They saw my nose coming through the hole and swung to their left side, seeing that I wouldn't be able to turn until I'd fully come through the bridge hole. I'm not sure if they were expecting me to continue turning so as to pass the correct side, but I didn't have space to do so, so just had to wait for them to carry on and then I could slip past their stern. As usual, no harm done, and all part of the fun of narrowboating. The sheep on the gently sloping field signified I was coming up to the junction where the canal split, so I was quickly back on the main part of the Calden, heading west towards Stoke-on-Trent. I rather liked this bridge reflection at Endon, hence pausing for a moment to get this shot. And I'm curious about this building, which looks possibly like an old pump house or something. Anyone know? This is where the ducks get together for their knit and natter mornings every Thursday. Approaching the Stoke outskirts, it was good to see this work by the Canal and River Trust, installing nice shiny metal armco on the canal side. If they can just do that and cut back the overgrowth all the way down to both ends of the canal, that'd be marvellous. Whoever thought it was a good idea to leave this sticking out here needs a telling off though, it was very hard to see as I approached. Just a random bit of armco plunged into the middle of the canal. You may recall there's a lift bridge here, and as luck would have it, I turned up just as some lovely American hire boaters were about to go through, so I jumped on their coattails and got through at the same time, saving me a lot of bother. For their kindness, I went ahead and set the next lock for them, and waved them on through first, we had a good chat too, they were very much enjoying their holiday. After a quick stop at Etruria services, I left the Calden and rejoined the Trent and Mersey Canal heading north. That looks like fun. excellent wildlife themed painting on this fence. Middleport Pottery, which is open for tours and has a tea room, hosts several independent craft type businesses such as art, photography, jewellery and so on. They also make the site available as a film location.
People often ask how much fuel my engine uses, and the honest answer is I have no idea. I just check it every couple of months and fill up if needed. With Stoke Wharf right here, now was the time. Boat diesel is somewhat confusing because it's taxed at two different rates for propulsion and domestic use. The quoted price is the lower domestic rate. I always add this stuff to help prevent diesel bug forming in the fuel. Tank filled, I went round the corner to Westport Lake where there's loads of mooring and I stopped for the night. It's a very pleasant spot this, a nice cafe overlooking the lake as well as boaters facilities. There's only one thing that stands between me and the Macclesfield Canal now, and that is the Harecastle Tunnel. It's almost 3,000 yards long, and it's great fun because in the middle, due to subsidence over the many, many decades, it actually gets lower as you go through, and you end up ducking down. The subsidence has been stabilised, it is perfectly safe, but there is a set routine and a safety protocol you have to go through to go through it, and as soon as you come out the other side, a sharp left turn, and I will be on the Macclesfield Canal. Long-term viewers may recognise the man and the dog on the towpath, plus the boat just ahead. That's Alan from the video I made about hybrid narrowboats, and there's his boat, Barnswood. I've left a link to that video in the description below. Fortifications for the forthcoming tunnel took the form of a packet of sweets. This reddy brown colour you usually see on the other side of the tunnel, not here. It is just rust from the iron in the tunnel rocks. And there's the entrance. You don't go straight in, it's strictly controlled. So you line up your boat on the right and get instructions from the tunnel keeper. While you wait, Boats coming the other way will usually emerge after their 30 to 45 minute trip, depending on how fast they go. You get clear instructions and a safety briefing, have your light and horn checked, and they do like you to wear a life jacket. You can fill up with water while you wait if you like. And then, when permission's given, you're off. I have done a video with much more detail about this trip through the tunnel before, so I've left a link to that in the description too, but I'll show you the gist of it. Once the last boat is inside, they shut those doors and turn on giant fans for ventilation. It all gets a bit noisy. Your task is to steer straight and duck at all the low bits, which are marked with fluorescent paint. It gets successively lower as you go, until the roof is right above your head as you crouch. I'm not holding the camera up here. Just before the end, a glimpse of the Kidsgrove Boggart, a painted skeleton in one of the brick arches. And then you're out. I did it in 35 minutes this trip, which isn't bad. See what I mean about the water? It's like something out of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory if the river had been fudge or caramel instead of chocolate. Ahead lie locks of the Trent and Mersey, but do a 90 degree turn left and you enter the Macclesfield Canal. It's quite blind for anyone coming out, so a warning sound is worth doing. Strictly speaking, the Macclesfield starts a mile or two further along. This initial bit I was turning onto is technically still the Trent and Mersey, but to all intents and purposes, this is the beginning. Shh. 
I paused once through the bridge to turn and wave at Alan and Wendy and the dogs who'd come through the tunnel behind me and were going on down the Trent and Mersey. Then this bit of canal turns right, so it's running parallel to the TNM, before going right again and over the Trent and Mersey on an aqueduct, just like the two arms of the Calden did, as shown in my previous video. It looked like this might be like the Calden in another respect, namely weed-ridden edges you can't hope to moor on, but in fact the Macclesfield was to be an absolute gem. There are some long-term canal and river trust moorings on the left here. And a warning about what's coming up. Right turn, Clyde. and over the aqueduct. You know what, let's see it from the air. And in a serendipitous bit of timing, you can see not only that white cruiser going over the aqueduct, but also a narrowboat underneath on the Trenton Mersey. It was a splendid day and immediately I liked this canal. Wide open countryside views, for some reason I'd had a good feeling about this even before I got here, and it was to prove well founded. Look, even a hint of a hill in the distance, the edges of the Peak District a feature of the Macclesfield Canal skyline. Flat fields are okay, but a bit of rolling landscape is just heavenly. And, like on the Ashby, some fantastic stone bridges too. Coming up to Hall Green Stop Lock, a lock with just a few inches rise or fall. And although the lock landing bollards are on the left here, there is an unusual narrowboat's width approach to the gates. So rather than tie here while I set the lock, I took the boat right up to the lower gate, on the basis that any outflow of water would be so negligible that the boat wouldn't go anywhere, and this proved to be right. Normally, if you left the boat by a lower gate while you empty the lock, the water flow would push it back all over the place, but here it didn't even move. This is inside the lock, waiting for it to fill all one foot of it at the most genteel pace. A lovely feature here is this box on the side of the cottages. Use your British Waterways key to open it and there's a stack of leaflets inside all about the canal. Onwards, and this is lush in so many senses. A British back garden wouldn't be complete without China ornaments, including, of course, garden gnomes. On this bend is a swing bridge that thankfully appears to be kept open. There are lots of these pinch points on this canal, mostly where bridges used to be but have been removed. Thankfully, there are only a couple of spots where the bridge still exists and has to be operated. Notice the chain under the water so people on the towpath side can pull the bridge shut when they need to cross. I think this horse has the most horse-like face I've ever seen on a horse. It's the kind of horse I'd draw as a child, or even as an adult. A 
At this point, I spotted a wharf and had been needing a new centre line for the port side, so I pulled up. Normally, I'd tie ropes at the front and back, but as I was only stopping for a minute or two, I risked it with a nappy pin on the centre line. This is typical of many canal side chandleries. Shelves stacked with boaty goodies. It's always hard not to buy more stuff than you need. Rope acquired and fitted, and I went further along with an eye to stopping soon. The views were still gorgeous. In fact, I would say the Macclesfield is now my new favorite canal. My map book for this canal is very old and was left on the boat by the previous owners who had annotated it in parts. I took a wild guess that LMH might stand for Lovely Moorings Here, so was looking forward to seeing if I was right. This is almost the spot, but no chance of mooring on the towpath side to the left and the offside is private as usual. Surely, I can't have been mistaken, what else could LMH possibly stand for? And then, suddenly, at the exact spot on the map, official two-day visitor moorings. Well, you know, I think I was right, and I think they were right. It is indeed lovely mooring here. My plan is just to stop for lunch and then carry on. But I have a sneaking suspicion the carry-on bit isn't going to happen. It's just too nice. And just as I was getting a shot to show you the view, this sound chugged its way into my ears. That's an unusually pointed bow, and I'm not sure of the engine, but it sounds glorious. Lovely, just like the moorings. That's it for now. <laughs>